let us see about the solution of the swing equation. Uh, we know normal options, conditions uh, that is relative position of the rotor axis and the resultant magnetic field axis is fixed and the angle between these two is angle, angle, angle. Under any disturbance, the rotor will decelerate or accelerate with respect to the synchronously rotating field and hence relative motion begins. The equation describing this relative motion is known as the swing equation. Okay, the and the stability of the generator will be maintained if the rotor locks back into the synchronous speed after the disturbance. So, the swing equation which is given as m d square del m by d t square is equal to p a and which is equal to p m minus p. This is the swing equation. The solution of this above equation gives a plot del versus time t and this graph is known as the swing curve. Okay. Now the question asked in, in, in your university exam with the for the marks 8 marks the pattern is explain the solution of swing equation by point by point method. Correct. Now the numerical solution it is also known as the numerical solution of the swing equation. In the case of single machine tied to infinite bus bar, the critical clearing time cannot be obtained from the equal area criteria. Yes, that's true. We had seen while uh, discussing about the applications of the equal area criteria, we had only calculated the critical clearing angle, not critical clearing time. But as we know, both are important. The critical clearing time is also very, very important for designing of the circuit breakers. Got it? Okay. So, we have to make this calculation numerically through swing equation. There are several sophisticated methods now available for the solution of the swing equation such as Runga Kutta method. Here, we shall treat the point by point method of solution which is a conventional approximate method like all numerical methods but a well tried and proven one. That's why we are going to see, we are going to see the solution of the swing equation by the point or method or also it is also known as what the step by step method. Let us illustrate the point by point method for one machine tied to infinite bus bar. The procedure is however general and can be applied to every machine of the multi machine system. Okay, so let us start the solution for the swing equation. For that first we have to consider the swing equation which is given as d square del by dt square is equal to 1 by m pm minus p max sin del with this pm minus p max sin del it is what p a. Okay, so in short we can write d square del by dt square is equal to p a by m where m is the angular momentum which is given as g h by pi or in per unit system it is in per unit system or it is like it is also given as m is equal to h by pi a. The solution of del is obtained at the discrete intervals of time with interval spread of delta t uniform throughout. What we are going to exactly doing here? We are calculating the change in del during small interval of delta t. This is our goal. Okay. So that means our main goal or main objective is that for small interval of delta t, we are going to calculate the change in the rotor angle del. Okay, what exactly uh, doing this method? The method, calculate, method calculates the change in the angular of the, of the rotor during a short interval of time. Okay, so for that again, there are certain assumptions made. Those assumptions are, useful, are very useful for derivation of the numerical solution of the swing equation. Let us see what are these assumptions. The first accelerate, the accelerating power P A computed at the beginning of an interval is assumed to be constant from the middle of the preceding interval to the middle of the interval under consideration. What this means? See here, you can see this graph P A versus the 
t by delta t that is the small interval of time it is taken as t by delta k these are the k these are the intervals n n minus 1 and n minus 2 and accordingly p a of n or p a of n minus 1 and so on these are the accelerations accelerating power with respect to the interval n it is represented by p a by n with respect to n minus 1 it is represented by p a n minus 1 and so on okay so coming to the first assumption what the what it is saying that the accelerating power computed if i consider this is the interval of time under consideration then this accelerating power from the previous interval to the next interval this what you observe here this is constant okay this is the first assumption this is assumed to be constant second assumption it is that the angular velocity computed at the middle of an interval remains constant over the interval okay similarly you can observe for these intervals n minus 1 n minus 2 the middle interval it is n minus 3 by 2 the middle of these two intervals it is what n minus 1 by 2 similarly for angular velocity for these intervals it is also constant you easily stand you easily observe here the angular velocity with respect to middle of the interval we specify this as what omega n minus 3 by 2 similarly for the middle of this interval this we specify as omega n minus 2 so according to assumption these values are assumed to be constant correct now uh, similarly if we consider the graphs l versus the small interval time t we obtain this graph these are the time intervals and for these time intervals between n n minus 1 this is the small change in time that is delta t similarly there is a small change in the angle rotor angle represented by delta del n another delta del n minus 1 okay now write down the certain equations so the first if we consider if we start from this graph okay so we can write the equation related with the accelerating power with respect to the interval n minus 1 okay so we write here as the uh, at the end of n minus 1 th interval the acceleration power is p a n minus 1 p m minus p e so here p e for n minus 1 th interval will be what p max sin del n minus 1 correct so call this equation as 12.68 so where del n, so where del n minus 1 has been predicted calculated the change in velocity that is omega it is caused by the accelerating power p1 and minus 1 and which is assumed to be constant from the middle of the interval as we have a middle of this from middle of the interval that is n minus 3 by 2 and n minus 1 by 2 so the change in these uh, in uh, velocities that is omega n minus 1 by 2 minus omega n minus 3 by 2 which is equal to uh, as shown here it is delta t into p into p a n minus 1 got it so call this equation 12.69 correct now what is our actual goal to calculate the change in angle rotor angle delta for the very small interval of time t okay so that we can plot swing curve that is del del versus t correct so for that let us have the equation that is delta delta del n minus 1 for n is n minus 1 at interval we are going to calculate so delta del n minus 1 you can easily observe from this that is this okay we are going to calculate this so this is the change in the rotor angle how will you calculate it is delta del n minus 1 is equal to delta n minus 1 minus delta n minus 2 similarly for change in uh, delta n for nth interval that is delta del n will be delta del n minus del n minus 1 as this is shown by the equation that is 12.70 a and 12.70 b okay similarly this can be represented with respect to the angular velocity as what and that is delta t into omega n minus 3 by 2 got it that is this with respect to 
this uh, that is delta t omega n minus 3 by 2 for this interval okay so we write we can write this as 12.70 a similarly here 12.70 b correct now subtracting these two equations that is from uh, equation this 12.70 a from this uh, equation 12.70 b and using 12.69 this expression also you do this please you do this and see whether you are same in the same expression substituting all the substituting all the values okay this is very important okay so using this finally what we can write delta n is equal to delta n minus 1 plus delta n now we are knowing the small change in the rotor angle as well as the change uh, as well as the rotor angle at the n, n minus 1 -th interval so we can find out the uh, rotor angle at nth interval correct okay so uh, so these two equations equations are very important to plot this swing curve you can see here this is the angle del versus t okay now uh, this you observe here this is the initial starting time then 5 it, 0.5 it is the time clearing clearing time uh, fault clearing time and this is the end of time that is equals to one second okay what you observe for these three periods initially when t is equal to zero and then it is going to increasing what you observe the rotor angle it is continuously increasing increasing and it reaches to this point at this point the fault has been cleared so as the that is at t is equal to 0.5 it is t clearing that is the clearing time the fault has been cleared therefore rotor starts decelerating and it reaches to the steady state condition that is the stable so it is clear you observe it is continuously increasing increasing and if the, there is any kind of delay in clearing the fault it obviously loses the synchronism as a rotor continuously increasing infinitely okay so that is the solution of the swing equation right got it okay thank you